Hello Grade 11s and welcome to this lesson on reducing trigonometric ratios. Reductions are, in essence, converting the ratios of any angle into ratios of angles that lie between 0 and 90 degrees. After the steps, we can use special angles to get numeric answers for our expressions. We will be using the cast diagram to help us do this. Let's revise what we have learnt in previous grades. The quadrants are numbered 1 through 4, moving anti-clockwise. In the first quadrant, all trig ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, only the sine ratio is positive. The rest are negative. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive. The rest are negative. Only cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. The rest are negative. If a terminal arm or radius falls in the first quadrant, the angle between the x-axis and the line will be between 0 and 90 degrees. If it falls in the second quadrant, the angle will be between 90 and 180 degrees. In the third quadrant, the angle will be between 180 and 270 degrees. Lastly, in the fourth quadrant, the angle will be between 270 and 360 degrees. We use the position of the terminal arm on the Cartesian plane to determine how to reduce the angle to an acute angle. To calculate the acute angle of a terminal arm that falls in the second quadrant, we let the angle we want to reduce equal 180 degrees minus theta and solve for theta. Before we look at what to do in the other quadrants, let's do an example of reducing an angle that lies in the second quadrant. The angle between this terminal arm and the x-axis is 150 degrees. Do you remember how to construct the triangle? We will construct the triangle to show where theta lies. When we construct the triangle, we always draw the line to the x-axis. Theta is the value of the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal arm. Now if we find theta, we can work out our trig ratios by using the triangle. To calculate the size of theta, we let 150 degrees equal 180 degrees minus theta. Therefore, theta is equal to 30 degrees. This looks a little confusing now, but as we do it more, it will become second nature to you. Let's look at what we should do in the rest of the quadrants. If the angle is between 180 and 270 degrees, it will fall into the third quadrant. To reduce it, we let the angle equal 180 degrees plus theta and solve for theta. If the angle is between 270 and 360 degrees, it will fall into the fourth quadrant. We let this angle equal 360 degrees minus theta and solve for theta. Did you notice that we only have calculations for angles up to 360 degrees? How can we reduce angles that are bigger than this? Let's answer this question by going back to the Cartesian plane. The angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis is 45 degrees. This angle is 405 degrees. Can you see that this terminal arm is in the same position as the previous one? This terminal arm has done two revolutions and has an angle of 765 degrees. Let's look at this again, but this time we'll start with the biggest angle, 765 degrees, and end with the smallest angle, 45 degrees. 765 degrees minus 360 degrees is 405 degrees. If we subtract 360 degrees from this, we get 45 degrees. Because the terminal arm is in the same position for all these angles, our trig ratios will be the same for each of them. This applies as long as the difference is one or more full revolutions of 360 degrees. Now that we've seen this on the Cartesian plane, let's do it in a calculation. We'll reduce the ratio of sine of 1024. 
sine of 1024 degrees can be written as sine of 360 plus 360 plus 304 degrees. We can cancel out two full revolutions. This means that sine of 1024 degrees is equal to sine of 304 degrees. Let's do another one. This time we'll work with a negative angle. Remember, negative 360 degrees is also a full revolution. Tan of negative 788 degrees can be written as tan negative 360 degrees minus 360 degrees minus 68 degrees. This is equal to tan negative 68 degrees. Let's take this to the next level. If the trig ratio stays the same when you add or subtract 360 degrees, we can now change negative 68 degrees to a positive angle. To change this to a positive angle, we add 360 degrees. This means that tan negative 788 degrees is equal to tan of negative 68 degrees, which equals tan 292 degrees. Once we have written the ratio with an angle between 0 and 360 degrees, we can then reduce the angle to an acute angle using our knowledge of the cast diagram. Let's look at the trig ratios for an angle of 200 degrees. We can see that 200 degrees is in the third quadrant. Let's start by applying the cast diagram. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive, all the other ratios are negative. And when we reduce the angles in this quadrant, we use 180 plus theta. Tan of 200 degrees is equal to tan of 180 degrees plus 20 degrees. When we reduce this, tan remains positive and we get the final answer of tan of 20 degrees. Now that we have reduced tan of 200 degrees, Let's reduce sine and cos. Remember that only tan is positive in the third quadrant. Sine of 200 degrees is equal to sine of 180 degrees plus 20 degrees. In the third quadrant, the value of sine is negative. This means that when we reduce the angle, we write the ratio as negative sine of 20 degrees. Cos of 200 degrees is equal to cos of 180 degrees plus 20 degrees. In the third quadrant, the value of cos is negative. This means that when we reduce the angle, we write the ratio as negative cos of 20 degrees. Can you see that the process was the same for all the trig ratios? We also used the cost diagram to see whether the reduced ratio would be positive or negative. Now let's try some questions together. In the first question, we need to find the value of cos of 300 degrees without the use of a calculator. 300 degrees falls in the fourth quadrant where cos is positive. We can write this as cos of 360 degrees minus 60 degrees. Now we reduce the ratio to positive cos of 60 degrees. Do you recognize this angle? It is one of the special angles, which means that we can determine the value of this ratio. This is the table we use to calculate the values of trig ratios for special angles. If you don't already have it, you can find it in the series guide on our website, or else you can pause now and take a moment to copy it down so that you can use it to work out your answers. So now we can work out that cos of 60 degrees is equal to a half. Now that we've done a simple question, let's do a more complicated one. See if you can calculate the value of sine of negative 225 degrees without the use of a calculator. You should start by adding 360 degrees to change negative 225 degrees to 135 degrees. The next step is to look where the angle of 135 degrees is on the cast diagram. 135 degrees is in the second quadrant where sine is positive. In this quadrant, we must apply 
180 minus theta. Now let's reduce the angle. Sine of 135 degrees is equal to sine 180 degrees minus 45 degrees. This is equal to sine of 45 degrees. Did you recognize this special angle? Let's finish the calculation by writing the value of sine of 45 degrees. Using the calculation table, we find that sine of negative 225 degrees is equal to root 2 over 2. Now let's combine everything we've done in an exam style question. We're going to do this a lot faster. If you get stuck, you can go back to watch the other examples again. Solve, without the use of a calculator, 3 cos 510 degrees over tan 315 degrees minus cos 240 degrees. First, we need to change all the angles to be between 0 and 360 degrees. We can convert the cos 510 degrees to cos 150 degrees by subtracting 360 degrees. Now we need to reduce the ratios to acute angles using the knowledge of the cos diagram. This gives us 3 times cos 180 degrees minus 30 degrees over tan 360 degrees minus 45 degrees subtract cos 180 degrees plus 60 degrees. This then reduces to 3 times negative cos 30 degrees over negative tan 45 degrees subtract negative cos 60 degrees. Remember that to find out if the ratios are positive or negative, you should look at the cos diagram. All of these angles are special angles, so let's change them to their numeric value. Now we have 3 times negative root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 minus negative half. Simplified, this gives us negative 3 root 3 over 2 divided by negative half. This simplifies to 3 root 3. As we can see, reductions need lots of practice and also require us to learn the process off by heart. Once we have done this, success will follow. Remember to try the trigonometric equations task video. You will also be able to learn more about trig reductions on the website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Grade Elevens. I'm so glad that we learned how to reduce theta because a big angle is a scary angle, but a reduced angle is a cute angle.